they had boats. But do you think they had boats 10,000 years ago? No. You say no? Why not? Well, I could have. I'm like those little rowboats, like a rowboat, like a plank, kind of like would attach to each other. A Is rowboat this across the entire open ocean? Maybe. That's a lot of rowing. Like thousands of miles in open ocean with storms and hurricanes. So how many of you think they walked? Raise your hand. Okay, how many of you think they had boats and we just don't know about them? Raise your hand. Okay, how many of you think it's just a coincidence and then maybe they just made arrowheads that look the same? Okay, so the two most, okay, so it's kind of divided, which is exactly what's going on with historians. We don't know. We have no idea. But there's- I think a, I have for all of them. So I, I haven't heard any historians with the theory that maybe it's just a coincidence, but I think that's an interesting theory because it could be. Maybe uh, I asked when they um sailed or walked or they got to Japan and then they were taught how to like make it and then once they decided to leave and then go all the way back. Yeah. Then they probably would have made it with like something that looked the same or like they would bring it bring it with them. Yeah, I mean it, it is possible that over thousands of years that technology got transferred. Like they just slowly, slowly, slowly made their way all the way across the ice bridge. Like it's possible. And that's what most people think is that they didn't have boats that could make that journey. But some people think that they had boats. And they we don't know. They could swimming. I don't think they swam. <laughs> I think you'd die. Or get eaten by sharks. Yeah. Or get fish food. So. We have a lot of cool ancient archaeological sites in the Americas. So in 1932, a you know the road crews that you see with the orange signs that are always building the street? And they always have their diggers and things. There was a I road crew. By my house, like they're, they're building um, like some places in front of my neighborhood. Oh man, that's frustrating. You probably hear beep, beep, beep all day long. So same thing, New Mexico, they were digging and they dug, they dug a hole and they're just doing their job. It's hot. It's Mexico. They're roasting in the sun and they're digging and all of a sudden they hit something and it was a bone. And then they kept digging and they found hundreds of bones. And as it turns out, guess what kind of bones they were? Dinosaur. Ooh. Human. Closer with dinosaur. Kind Chicken. of. Yes, Emily. Chickens. <laughs> Maybe yes, like either early humans, like really, really early humans, or the bones of the animals that they killed and stuff. Ah, there you go. Luna. Yes, Luna. I was going to say what Emily said. I was going to say, like, the bones, like, the animals that they killed, the bones of the animals that they killed. That's exactly what, you're absolutely right, Luna, that's exactly what they found. Good job, Emily and Luna. It was, and they, and Sophia, you're kind of right at, it, it kind of, kind of dinosaurs, they're woolly mammoths. They found the bones of a bunch of baby woolly mammoths, and they found some more of those clover, clovis points, the jasper or obsidian points with the sharp edges. Here they are. That's definitely obsidian. And I have a piece of obsidian. And when you feel the edges, it's very sharp. Very sharp. In fact, you can use it in surgery. And it has been used in surgery because it's so sharp. But actually, there's this tool where they take a stick and then they put pieces of like magma, which is just obsidian, like cold obsidian. Yeah. They put like tiny little pieces of like cold obsidian on it. And then 
but they don't secure it though. So when the sky goes battering into his enemies, the obsidian pieces fly off and get like dug into their flesh. It's absolutely gross, and that's how they would take out enemies because they get infected and they would die. Emily, what in the world are you reading? What book are you reading in your free time? It was actually just a history class book. I finished one. Horrible histories. I finished book one, two, three, and four uh, in the history class on the first week. So, holy cow! Might be horrible histories. That's the sort of thing they say. My niece loves those too. Those are good books. In fact, I'd love to teach those over summer courses. They're really violent, but they're fun. They're fun. Uh, yes. Yes, Mandy? Can it bleed? What? Can it make someone bleed? Oh, yes. Yes, it's like but, sharper but, than a knife. But it doesn't like that sharp. Like, Wait, I've seen I've little... seen videos online where they make like these really cool ancient weapons, and they like show like they show like a piece of like leather, and you know those like those like really thick pieces, pieces, and he grabs it and he like skates it across, and the leather splits in two, like he's cutting through butter. Oh yeah, it's it's but sharper Emily, than a knife. If, um, if he lays it around to take out their enemies, then wouldn't some of the um. People that have the stick would die too. Mm. I saw a hedgehog, like a hedgehog, like the like the hedgehog fancy thing. Was it at an art museum once? And then um, so that and then for like a field trip, like last month, I think yeah. And then that the the, the um. The guy who was showing us the hedgehog, the hedgehog like spikes, he let us touch it. And then and then and then we and then we got paper and then the hedgehog um and then the hedgehog uh uh spike ripped the paper and then that um that guy who showed us the hedgehog spikes even said that um he got he, he started to bleed, like his hand is bleeding yeah. when he was touching one of those. Yeah, dogs get their faces hedgehogged all the time. And you actually, they have to go into like surgery to get all of those things out because they have hooks on them. They're really hard to get out of your skin if you get hedgehogged. So don't go petting any hedgehogs is the moral of Mandy's story. Actually, yeah. did. Don't pet hedgehogs. I did. Sophia, why are you petting hedgehogs? Because it was, it was at the petting thing. Hey, kids, pet the hedgehog. <laughs> that, yeah. sounds, that sounds like a bad idea, Sophia. Guess what's on this? Guess what? There was literally a hedgehog in it. Guess what is on my camera? Your finger. Uh, yeah, yeah your finger. Red. Nope. Your thing. Your, your animal balloon. Ooh. It's like a ribbon. Red. A leather? Yeah, you know, the reason why obsidian is so sharp is if you think about it, it's like glass because the type of rock that it is is straight melted magma that cools really fast. And so it's basically like... And it leaves no time to crystal form. Exactly. Good job. Good job with your geology. So... I want third place. I love that. Yes, Mandy. Mandy, quickly, quickly. We gotta keep going or we'll never even make it to the Aztecs. Uh, so it doesn't look sharp. And also, do people like get a obstetine? And then does obstetine or whatever it's called come like that? Or do people have to carve it? Ah, they have to carve it. So you see how, so what they're doing is kind of chipping off little pieces. It It does come looking like a big black rock like a chunk of lava. But yeah, to get those sharp edges, they have to chip away at it little by little. And you can see all the grooves where they chipped at it. And that's where knowing your geology is useful because you have to use a rock that can chip it. If you use a rock that's softer, it'll it'll just break. So 
But they found these 10,000 of them all across North America, South, South America, um, in 1,500 locations. So you could be walking and you could find some of these. In fact, I used to collect these. What in the bags. world was that? That's the woolly mammoth. Did you pet one of these at the petting zoo too, Sophia? Yeah. You did not. They're extinct. That was a trap. I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, you could pet one. Mm -hmm. Like, you just touch Come the on, pet one. And pet one. Well, knowing your generation, you'll bring it back from extinction with DNA and then create a woolly mammoth petting zoo. Listen. Please don't do anything weird Listen. like that. I will. Things walking around the neighborhood. Thank you. Did you know that, that if that dinosaurs that. actually survived, then we would they would actually only be me, right? Because of some like weird evolution thing that I don't really remember, but I read off of Brain Pop once and something happened. Pop. And I remember that if dinosaurs were actually alive, they would be tiny like little peanuts. Like yeah. it, would be, it would only be it would only be like me height. Wow. Like, evolution and stuff. I don't know. Well, there's well you know, most of these really big animals died off during the ice age, but things like turtles and alligators lived. And some of the wow. small little small animals lived. So that's why we have those. And of course elephants are descended from woolly, woolly mammoths. Yes, Mandy? Um so I say mammoths at the zoo, and are they that scary? Or can they be like a pet? Hmm? Being be that woolly mammoths are extinct, I don't know whether or not they would make good pets. Wow. Yes, Heather. Yes, yeah. Sophia. Um, a woolly mammoth. It looks like um. An elephant mixed with a wool. <laughs> a wolf? Uh, no, a silverback gorilla. Oh, that's an interesting, that's a really interesting observation, Sophia. With like those little, um, tusks. Those things, yeah. So here's the bone pile they found. This is in Arizona, the Lair Mammoth Kill Site. And what we know from this pile of bones they discovered is that people ate baby mammoths. They actually, they weren't very good hunters. And so they'd wait at the water holes and they'd only hunt the baby mammoths and they usually the sick ones, like they weren't very good hunters. Uh, there was a horse, a tapir, bison, a camel, a bear, several rabbits, and a garter snake. What? You know, those little garter snakes? There's like, no. snakes. You're telling me that people ate gardener snakes? What I think I've eaten snake. Don't tell you me that. Snake. snake is like chicken. You can eat it. It's fine. I I wouldn't describe the sensation of biting into a scaly reptile as chicken. Ooh, a little chewier. I, I ate alligator. I've eaten snake. I've eaten frog. It's really quite similar to chicken. Yes, Mandy? Chewy, though. Not my favorite. Um, so does it taste disgusting? No, it tastes fine. But you're eating a frog. Yeah. A frog. A frog, yeah. Frog's le frog legs are like a gourmet delicacy in France. They eat them all the time. I saw frog legs before after you said buffet, and they were like this, not really green, but kind of green, and then, and then they were like, and then there was these, like, and then it was only frog legs, but I don't, but why don't they do like the whole frog? I don't think, you, I don't know if you can eat the whole frog, but you, yeah. mostly people eat the legs. I, I'm sure they eat frog legs in China, don't they? And I know they eat snakes. No. You can buy snake wine. Have you ever heard about the snake wine and it's got a whole snake in it? Yeah, it's supposed to make Miss you strong. Heather. Yes. What is that thingy right there? Oh, good. That's about, that's what I was going to ask you. So this is the Paisley Caves. And no. is... like that thing. Say. What thing? Like that thing with the black hole 
Oh, that's an archaeology site. So that's a dig site where they dug a hole. No, not that. Can I, can I staple that? Sure. I can't. Let's see. One sec. Security. Uh, chat meeting. Where is it? Where is the allow students to draw all over the place control? Hmm. They changed the that's weird. I don't know where it went. I don't know how to let I don't know how to give you the permission anymore. Oh, here we go. View options. I can stop you from sharing, but why can't I? Yeah, I don't know, Sophia. I don't know how to that's weird. I don't know how to do it. Yeah. Hmm. Let me try. Let me try again. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. Let's see if we can find your black thing. Sophia, stop it. Here we go. Seriously, stop it. Um. I'm sure I can stop that. There we go. Oh, bummer. It doesn't work anymore. Hmm. Wait. Oh, it's the whiteboard. Oh, no. Your button's broken. What a tragedy. All right. So, this is an archaeological site. Right there. Top, bottom, left, right? Top. Top, left, or right? Left. Is it a circle? Right there. That's a hat. <laughs> and then there's a notebook. Yep. Because you write everything down when you do archaeology. But what I want to know from you is what are they holding? So this thing that they're holding. I know what they're holding. What? A rock. Nope. Um, kind of. Fossils. Sacred fossil kind of. but Kind of. This object oh. is a hugely exciting discovery for an archaeologist because uh -huh. it can tell us what ancient humans ate. It can tell us the kinds of animals that lived during that time. I can see rats. A mini time machine. Yes, Luna. A mammoth bone? Yes, Mandy. Is it like a mini time machine? It's about it's a it's about this big. So a mini time machine. Or like you you know you were kind you're not wrong you're not wrong with fossil, but thinking of it as a fossil will be misleading to you guessing it. Yes, Sophia. Um, is it like a? Okay. It's something it's, it's, that it's, it's 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 like a um a diary. No, well, it's a kind it's of like a diary. A, um, T Rex um skull. No, it's something that no, all of a, you it's, have. It's, all of you have seen today, probably. D N A. It's something that your would house. Even even today, oh, tell us what you ate. Miss Heather. Oh, Miss Heather. Yeah. Miss Heather. Yeah. Yeah. That's the answer. The answer is Miss oh, Heather. The answer yeah. is Miss Heather. We see you. It's usually pretty smelly. Poop. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. It is pooped. This is 14,000 year old poop. So they're just touching poop. I mean, yes. they're just squishing poop in their hands. No, it's fossilized poop. Yeah. So they so that's why I said whoever said the fossil was kind of right. Mm. And in this poop, yes, Sophia? Um, I'll say it. You said poop? You just want to say oh, the fossil. 
Oh yeah, exactly. It's fossilized poop. So in this poop, it's called a coprolite. <laughs> so if you poop in your backyard and then it becomes fossilized, which is unlikely because you need a really dry place. So maybe if you live in the desert, then 14,000 years from now, maybe someone finds Sophia's poop and is like, "Woo! what an exciting archaeological find. And in this poop, they found woolly mammoth. They found seeds, rodent bones like rats, the outer casings of insects, meaning they ate bugs, and organic compounds from plants. And because it's poop, it's also a treasure because we can use radiocarbon dating to figure out how old it is because it has organic matter, things that used to be alive in it. Yes, Mandy. Uh, so who pooped it? Like, did a mammoth poop that? No, it was a human poop. What? It's a human poop. It's a it's a human poop fossil. What? Wait, then what are those footprints? Also humans? Yes. No, but what am I? They're, they're all, like, they're oh, above the ground. It's not like a footprint below. It's still a oh it um it is below. Sometimes the way that you look at this, it doesn't look like it's concave, meaning it goes but down. There's a but shadow is, right there. Yeah, it's it the shadows are what make it look like it's above, but it's actually it is below. It is confusing. But here's the thing. So this is White Sands National Park in the United States. And But then wouldn't the shadow be on the other side? Well, the sun's coming from this direction, top right. So, no. They're pretty deep. So. They actually don't. Now, deep. I just told you that in order to date something as an archaeologist, to tell how old it is. Poop. You would need. Poop. Not just poop, but anything that used to be alive. Anything organic. DNA. Organic. That would be organic. So, but these are footprints and they are in rock. What? How can we figure out how old they are? By um, studying their poop. There's no, no poop. No, by studying the layers. Uh, kind of. Yes, Emily. A lot of different humans had different types of footprints because they kind of evolved from monkeys. So I guess that. Definitely. That would be one clue for sure definitely to, to study sort of any other footprints that we have and try to match them up to see if we can see any patterns how else I do. and layers is not wrong we definitely would look at layers but we don't have a lot of information here we know i know that... how to look for what that right there there, we would be looking for something. We'd be looking for something that used to be alive. So what kind of things do you think might have been alive? People. Other than people. Yes, Luna. Mammoths. Animals. Animals. Well, yeah. I, wish we, I wish we would find the age of the footprints. Yes. How will we find the age? So you could look for animals, but there's no animals. What else could we look for near these footprints that will give us a clue? Yes, Mandy. Huh? Yes, Emily. Houses. What, like, first of all, where it is, because we know some humans didn't move to someplace else at a different time. Two, like, what ground level are they at? Like, because, like, the world is constantly like shifting over, getting like ground move, dirt is moved, so like it depends. Good question. So, this is likely below sea level, and we know it used to be a large wetland, like a swamp. Probably this was a lake during rainy season. Now it dry. It did. Why is it so dry? But if you were to imagine it as a lake, what kind of things might be around? Fish. Okay, what else? Animal. Animals, okay. Water. 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 And you're missing one big one. Yes, Luna. Tree. Seaweed? You're, you'll be in Luna, you're in the right direction. Plant. Plant. Yes. 
So they found some seeds underneath these footprints. And because the seeds were right underneath them and they were able to date the seeds because of radiocarbon dating, they were able to figure out that these footprints are the oldest footprints in the world. anywhere in North America, 23,000 years old. Now this causes another big problem because we all thought that people didn't come over until like 16,000 years ago, but now we've got footprints that are 23,000 years old. So again, we aren't quite sure when people got to the Americas, but maybe it was quite a bit before we thought. Yes, maybe, maybe. It was the, maybe it was the Vikings footprint. Yeah. That's way later. Way later. Maybe, maybe the um, Native American. Yes. Agreed. It probably was the Native Americans. And here are some of the earliest Native Americans. Or maybe it was in like, um, in like maybe a Spanish speaking country. Yep. Well, very close to Spanish speaking. Oh, maybe Mexico? Yep. And that's actually what we're looking at next. Miss, I love the Bahamas chickadee. Bahama. So, like Mandy. A lot of these early peoples kept moving more and more south so they could lay in the sunshine and hang out at the beautiful beach. And and this was jungle. It still is. A lot of it is jungle. The first of those civilizations that was quite big was the Olmec. And the Olmec are famous because of these giant heads, which we find all throughout the jungle. They're still there. There are these huge heads. That's most of what we know about the Olmec, is they left these giant heads. Now, looking at the face of the head, where do you think these this group was from? Do you think that they were African, Asian, European? Where do you think they came from? I think they came from Africa. Why? Yeah. Because I saw in a video that last said the like, first people were from Africa. Well, actually, Manny, that's a good argument. Everybody, every single one of us originally came from Africa. So you're right. There, you couldn't, that, that's a strategic answer because you could not be wrong. I originally, came they must be descended from Africans. Yes. Yes, Emily. How was I from Africa? Because when, well, because if everything is descended from Africa, and I know that there's a lot of religion, and they could be gods, and they could be shrines, or maybe they were made by, like, to like, I don't know, represent something? Yeah, they're wearing a ball helmet, by the way. The, we know that these early people like to play sports, including a basketball game of doom, in which if you lost the basketball game, you get sacrificed to the gods. No, if you won the basketball game, you get sacrificed to the gods. Why? Really fair because it means it's a lose-lose. Either you lose and you probably die, or you win and you get sacrificed. Why would you get 